Story time about one of the worst customers ever. I got a new job at a coffee shop downtown. It was my first day out of training and I would be taking orders and making drinks on my own. I was a little nervous, but excited and ready to be by myself. Everything was going great until this woman came in. She came up to the counter and immediately noticed that I was new there. She said, I'm a regular and come in almost every day. Write my order down and save it so I don't have to explain it to you again next time. At first, I thought she was joking, so I smiled and laughed. But then I quickly realized that she wasn't kidding. She proceeded to order a very complicated drink, which I didn't mind. I was up for the challenge. I made her drink and handed it to her with a smile. Without even trying it, she said the color was off and requested I remake it. When I turned around to try again, she said, Don't mess it up this time. It's not rocket science. I remade the drink and this time she picked it up and looked at it, didn't try it, and complained that I put too much caramel in it and asked if I was trying to make her fat. I remade the drink a third time, doing everything she requested. This time she actually tried the drink and immediately spit it back into the cup. She then told me that I'm horrible at my job, called me incompetent and lazy, and of course asked to speak to my manager. It only got worse from here. Without ever actually speaking to him. After a few weeks of writing to each other on receipts, he finally decided to shoot his shot. He came in at his usual time and I immediately started making him something new that I had in my head all day. Sweet cream ice cream with Oreos and little heart-shaped candies that I brought from home just for this. As always, he left me his note on the receipt with a tip, but it was special this time. It said, it's my turn to make you something. Meet me at Jasmine's Fine Kitchen tomorrow at 9 p.m. The restaurant he was referring to was in the same parking lot where I work. I went home and spent about two hours trying to figure out what I was going to wear for my date. I showed up the next night to the restaurant, ready to finally talk to this guy. I walked in and I saw him waiting for me at a really nice table in the back of the room. The first thing he said to me was, what can I get you tonight, miss? With a huge smile on his face. It turns out he works as a cook at the restaurant. I, of course, told him to surprise me, just like he would always request from me. He went to the back and immediately came out with a three-course meal that he had already prepared for us. We had the most amazing date and the rest is history. He still comes in every Friday to get his surprise ice cream without ever actually speaking to him. I work at a small family-owned ice cream shop. This really cute guy would come in every Friday around 5. I never actually took his order as I was the one making the cones and sundaes behind the counter. He would always tell my coworker taking the orders, I want whatever she's in the mood to make. Tell her to surprise me. And he would point me out. My coworker would deliver the message and he would look at me and smile. Each Friday when he came in, he would say, I'll have my regular order, whatever she wants to make. I made him something different every week. I try to be creative and give him something new and fun every time. I would try really hard not to look over at his booth, but I would always catch myself staring. He started leaving me little flirty messages on his receipt with a small cash tip at his table. I started to write back on his orders with caramel or chocolate sauce on his plate the best I could. However, it wasn't very legible or practical, so I started giving him flirty little sticky notes with his order. It made my Fridays really fun and something to look forward to. I was waiting for him to ask me for my number or to ask me out on a date so we could actually talk to each other. This went on for weeks until he finally made the cutest move ever. Killing serial killers you may not have heard of. Israel Keys tells police that he pulled a gun on Samantha and tied her hands with zip ties. He lied to her, telling her that she was going to be okay and he just wanted ransom money. She believed him and gave him access to her cell phone and banking information. Once he had everything he needed, he sexually assaulted her and killed her in his shed all while his girlfriend and daughter were in the house nearby. After killing her, he went and packed for a cruise with his family. During those two weeks, Samantha's body stayed frozen in his shed. When he returned, he had sewn her eyes open and took a picture of the ransom note, making it look like she was still alive. Due to freezing temperatures, she hadn't shown any signs of decomposition. He dismembered and disposed of her body in a lake north of Anchorage. Israel confessed that he's hunted and killed since 1997. All of his victims were missing persons who had never been connected to him. He planted kill bags full of weapons and money across the U.S. and picked his victims at random. He sexually assaulted all of his victims and had no regard for age, race, or gender, which is what made him so terrifying. Anyone could be his victim at any time. During his interviews, he dropped hints about his killings, which led the FBI to believe that he was one of the most notorious serial killers to exist. Unfortunately, all hopes of answers were lost because on December 2nd, 2012, Israel took his own life in his prison cell. One of the most chilling serial killers you may not have heard of. On February 1st, 2012, a young man in Anchorage, Alaska went to pick up his girlfriend, Samantha Koenig, from work. She was just 18 years old and worked at a small coffee stand. When he arrived, she wasn't there and the lights were off. Then he received a text from her saying that she was spending a few days with her friends and to tell her dad. He felt off about this and immediately told her father, who instantly reported her missing that night. The coffee stand surveillance showed a man breaking in through the window and forcing Samantha to go with him. Two weeks ago, by when Samantha's boyfriend gets a text from her phone that leads them to a ransom note in a park. Along with the note is a picture of Samantha with that day's newspaper. Her eyes were open and she looked pretty bruised up. The note demanded that $30,000 be transferred to her bank account. Her account starts getting withdrawals, but police keep missing this guy. On March 7th, her account starts getting withdrawals from all over the U.S. On Bing cameras, they noticed the person had a white Ford Focus, so police put out an APB. The car is pulled over by a highway patrol officer in Texas. The man named Israel Keys had an Alaskan driver's license. After searching his car, they find all the evidence that links him to Samantha's disappearance. However, Samantha isn't with him and he's the only one who knows where she is.
Part two of how I moved into a haunted house. I slept in my mom's room the next few nights and we could hear the knocking on my bedroom door from her room, followed by the door slowly creaking open. The next night we decided to leave the door open and that night we heard nothing, no knocking. Every time we left it shut, the knocking would happen, followed by the door slowly creaking open. We did some research online and discovered that two people took their own life in this house over 15 years ago. We asked around and found out the whole story from one of our neighbors. It turns out the boy who used to live in my room was bullied every day at school, and his mother was worried about him. She was always knocking on his door asking him to keep the door open and make sure he was okay, especially at night before bed. One night, she knocked on his door to say goodnight and he wouldn't answer back. She pushed the door open and found him dead. Our current neighbor came over after hearing the news to comfort the mom, and that's when he found out all the details of the incident. It ended up being too much for the mom to handle and weeks later she took her own life in the house as well. I've since moved out of the room and we keep it empty. We never close the door so the mom can check on her son without worry. I was never the type that believed in ghosts. I thought that stories of haunted houses, spirits, and supernatural were just that. Stories. That changed when my mom and I moved into a new house in Chicago. I started to notice small things at first. Lights turning on and off, strange noises in the middle of the night, and doors creaking open randomly, all which can be blamed on the house being old. But every night, I would hear the same noise on my bedroom door. followed by the door slowly creaking open. The first few times, I blamed the old door and the aged hinges, but it kept happening and the knocks kept getting louder and louder. One night, I decided to move my small nightstand in front of the door on the inside of the room so it couldn't be pushed open easily. Whatever was knocking on my door didn't like this. The taps that night turned into violent bangs. I screamed for my mom to come and she came rushing into the room, knocking over my nightstand in front of the door. When I told her what was going on, I thought she'd call me crazy, but she just stared at me silently with a shocked look on her face. That's when she told me that she's been hearing the same noises coming from my my door but she didn't want to scare me. What happened next still freaks me out to this day. Part 2 of how I stole my boyfriend's side chick. Jessica and I decided to meet up downtown and come up with a plan on how we were going to confront Zach about playing us both. We were planning on doing it together to make him as uncomfortable as possible. I was surprised when I first saw her because she was drop dead gorgeous which made me a little nervous at first. We met up at a brunch spot and began talking over mimosas. She was furious with Zach for wasting her time and lying to her, as was I. Everything she was saying was exactly how I felt. A few more mimosas in and she said, we don't need him, we're way too cute for him anyways, especially you. That's when she grabbed my hand to comfort me. When she grabbed my hand, I got nervous and jokingly made a comment about how I'm done with men. Surprisingly, she agreed and said we should start dating women instead with a smile. We went shopping after brunch and ended up back at her place a few hours later drinking wine. A few glasses in, we began trying on and modeling some of the new clothes we bought. One thing led to another and we hooked up. We really hit it off and we stayed up all night talking and laughing. I went to her place again the next night and the night after that. We both ended up completely ghosting Zach and dating each other instead. It's been over a year now and we couldn't be any happier. So, thanks Zach. Part 1 of how I stole my boyfriend's side chick. My boyfriend Zach and I decided to check out a new restaurant in town for date night. We got in his car and started to head out. He usually has better cell coverage than me, so we were using the navigation on his phone to get to the new spot. I noticed his buddy from work, Matt, was texting him as usual. However, this time I noticed the heart emojis out of the corner of my eye at the top of the screen from Matt, which I thought was weird. I started to think about it, and Matt would always text pretty late at night, and my boyfriend always seemed really happy when texting him. I played it off like I was going to look for a faster route, picked up his phone, and quickly called copy down the number. When we got to the restaurant, I started paying attention and noticed Zach texting throughout our date. The next day, I called the number and a girl named Jessica answered. He saved her number under Matt and told me it was a buddy from work for months. We started talking and she told me that she had no idea that he had a girlfriend. She also told me that they met on Tinder and they've been talking for a while. She was really honest and cool about it and she was just as mad as I was. We decided to meet up and talk some more about what we were going to do to get back at him. This is when things got interesting. Part 2 of the worst customer ever. After she requested to speak to the manager, I went to get the shift lead and explain the situation. He immediately knew what customer I was referring to. My manager went to speak to her as I remade her drink a fourth time. She demanded that the drink be free and that we also let her pick a food item on the house for wasting her time. When we refused, she went ballistic and started screaming that she would never come here again and that we lost a customer. She demanded that we get the owner of the store down here immediately and said that she wouldn't leave until the owner arrives. We told her that she would have to leave or we would call the cops. She continued screaming at us, took the drink without paying, and knocked over one of the displays on her way out. My manager said that this customer complained almost every day, told me I'm doing a good job, and thanked me for finally getting rid of a Karen. I couldn't believe my eyes when she came back a few days later. I was dreading having to take her order again. To my surprise, my manager confronted her about not paying the other day and knocking over our display. He then asked her to leave, but she went crazy again and refused to leave, and this time we did have to call the cops. Ultimately, she left before the police came and hasn't been back since.